It's been four uh, decades of a long uh, journey, but now the Voyager 2 spacecraft has finally bid farewell to our solar system. In the far reaches of our solar system, Voyager 1 has sailed silently through the void for nearly half a century, a lone emissary of humanity traveling deeper into the cosmic sea than any machine before it. For decades, it has dutifully transmitted faint signals back to Earth, data pulses echoing across more than 15 billion miles, carrying with them a whisper of what lies beyond our planetary neighborhood. These signals have been a constant, a heartbeat in the darkness, until, without warning, something changed. The transmission altered, then it ceased altogether. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. What made this moment so chilling wasn't just the silence itself, it was what came just before. For a brief period before cutting off, Voyager 1 sent a burst of data unlike anything ever received. It wasn't garbled or corrupted. It wasn't a random stream of cosmic radiation interference. It was deliberate, structured, patterned in a way that suggested intelligence. Engineers and scientists who had monitored Voyager's telemetry for decades were stunned. This wasn't a malfunction. This wasn't a solar flare or cosmic ray mishap. This was different. The transmission lasted precisely 4 minutes and 28 seconds. During that time, Voyager 1's instruments, which hadn't reported anything anomalous in years, began to behave in ways that defied all known protocols. Sensors activated without command. Data streams restructured themselves mid-transmission. Time signatures within the telemetry became non-linear. Fragments from the past, interwoven with seemingly future events, blurred the edges of what was once thought to be chronological certainty. Then silence. No more pings. No more data. No more Voyager 1. The world didn't stop because it had lost contact with an old spacecraft. It stopped because what Voyager 1 sent before it vanished shook the foundations of everything we thought we understood. Experts across disciplines, astrophysicists, mathematicians, cryptographers, linguists, were immediately summoned to make sense of what had been received. What they found wasn't just strange. It was impossible. The data defied decryption. Yet it was plainly structured. It contained sequences that mirrored Earth languages, but none that could be directly translated. Hidden within were mathematical constants, but with deviations that suggested either an error or an entirely different system of logic. And then there was the audio file. Embedded within the transmission was a compressed waveform, clearly artificial. When unpacked, it played a series of tones and pulses, undulating in frequency and intensity seeming to mimic biological rhythms. It wasn't music, it wasn't noise, it was a message, but not one designed for human ears. The waveform, when visualized, formed a kind of recursive pattern, similar to a fractal but with embedded glyphs that no known culture, ancient or modern, had ever recorded. Some experts claimed it resembled a form of consciousness encoding, a way to communicate not through language but through perception itself. It was as if Voyager 1 had become a messenger not just from Earth, but from something else, something it had encountered far beyond the orbit of the Sun. As the world tried to make sense of this last gasp from the stars, the implications began to settle like dust on a glass surface, light but undeniable. Voyager 1 had been our first true step into interstellar space. It carried with it humanity's greatest hopes and most humble greetings. But what if something had responded? What if that final transmission was not just a malfunction or a corrupted signal, but a reply? The idea wasn't science fiction anymore. It was a serious, agonizing question faced by the brightest minds on the planet. Something had been encountered, something vast, deliberate, and unknowable. And whatever it was, it had reached back. Not with a simple signal or an easily interpretable binary code, but with a layered message wrapped in unfamiliar logic, strange harmonics, and fractal-like intelligence. A form of contact that didn't ask questions, didn't declare itself, but simply was, and in being, changed everything. Even without clear interpretation, the effect of the message was profound. Those who studied it closely reported dreams filled with strange geometries, languages they could not speak but somehow felt. Some dismissed it as cognitive imprinting, the mind's natural response to patterns too complex to understand. Others whispered darker ideas, that the message had done something, that in receiving it, humanity had opened a door that could not be closed. The location of Voyager 1, when it sent the transmission, was charted immediately. It was moving through the heliopause, having long since crossed the threshold into interstellar space. But its coordinates during the final transmission pointed to a region with no known stellar objects, no pulsars, no planets, 
no debris fields, just darkness. And yet something had been there. For days after the transmission, deep space listening arrays were reoriented to focus on that empty patch of sky. No other signals were received. Voyager 2, traveling along a different trajectory, was still functional, but it reported nothing unusual. It was as if whatever had contacted Voyager 1 had done so in a singular moment, at a singular place, and then disappeared, or worse, had taken Voyager 1 with it. This wasn't just a technological failure, it was an existential tremor. If the transmission was, in fact, a response to the original Voyager message, the Golden Record, with its greetings, music, and data about Earth, then humanity had, for the first time, received an answer. But instead of clarity, the reply brought an abyss of questions. The mere possibility that something had responded fundamentally altered the perspective of those watching the stars. Institutions that had long separated science and philosophy began to cross-pollinate, driven by the need to explain not just what had happened, but what it meant. If Voyager 1 had made contact, then what or who had it contacted? And more unsettlingly, did it now know about us? Not all scientists were convinced this was a reply from intelligent life. Some proposed alternate theories, that Voyager 1 had drifted into a region of space where physics behaves differently bending the instruments in strange, seemingly intelligent ways. Others argued that an artificial intelligence embedded in the spacecraft, impossible by known mission specs, might have awakened in the extreme isolation and exposure to unknown radiation fields, producing something akin to synthetic consciousness. But no model fit the data precisely. The transmission remained a monolith, uninterpreted, complete, and impenetrable. Whatever happened, it had captured the collective attention of every spacefaring agency, and even those that weren't. Collaborations formed overnight. Data centers across continents shared processing power in real time, trying to simulate and decode the message. The waveform pattern was studied in tandem with Voyager 1's previous telemetry, looking for signs of gradual changes, signs that this moment had been building. Indeed, in hindsight, there were signs small fluctuations in signal harmonics, power usage anomalies, a subtle reorientation in Voyager 1's communications array, an adjustment no one had commanded. It was almost as if the craft had been preparing for this moment, as if something had reached out, adjusted it, and whispered through its sensors a message too complex for humans to comprehend in the moment, but too important to ignore. The silence that followed was not the silence of loss, but of anticipation. The whole world for a moment felt smaller, fragile, as if our place in the cosmos had shifted and we hadn't yet caught up to the gravity of it. And in that stillness, questions bloomed like stars. Was the message a warning? A greeting? A map? Was it a key to something not yet unlocked? Or was it a test to see if we were ready, not technologically but perceptually, to grasp something far older and more evolved than we could imagine? There were no immediate answers, only theories, only awe. And Voyager 1, our most distant ambassador, our silent scout beyond the known frontier, was gone. Not destroyed, not confirmed to be lost. Simply, no longer responding. As if it had fulfilled its purpose and moved on to something greater, or been moved. Governments scrambled quietly. Publicly, statements were brief, cautious, and focused on technical anomalies. But beneath the surface, teams were dispatched. Resources diverted, budgets reallocated. This was no longer just about science. It had become something more primal, an encounter with the unknown, an echo from the abyss. All the while, that final transmission remained under constant analysis. It was studied like a relic, revered and feared in equal measure. New algorithms were developed just to try to peel back its layers. Every so often, a breakthrough would be announced, a small piece interpreted, a pattern recognized, but the full picture remained elusive, like a puzzle missing its central piece. There was an unspoken fear. What if the message wasn't meant to be understood now? What if its purpose was to plant something, in thought, in code, in the human subconscious, that would only bloom in the future? Not all implications were comforting. Some speculated the transmission was a kind of seed, or even a signal that would call something else. The idea that Voyager 1 had triggered a beacon that might draw attention not just once, but again, later, unsettled even the most skeptical minds. And yet, amid all the mystery, something else emerged. A sense of wonder that a machine, built by human hands in the late 1970s, had voyaged farther than any explorer before it, and in doing so may have reached the edge of something extraordinary. That beyond the boundaries of our solar system, something might be waiting, not in hostility, not in conquest, but in curiosity. In recognition, Voyager 1 had always carried our story, our music, 
our science, our dreams. And perhaps in that distant moment, those dreams had been heard. The silence that followed wasn't empty. It was pregnant with potential, with meaning, with the terrifying beauty of the unknown. And the world, for once, listened, not with fear, but with reverence. Because for the first time in human history, we had reached out to the stars, and the stars had reached back. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, leave your comments below and tell us. What are your thoughts on Voyager 1's hidden transmission? Expect shock or discovery? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.